What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my second True Tech Data video. Um, if you know me, you follow my Twitter, you know I'm obsessed with having the absolute best setup for whatever I'm doing. So whether that's playing Warzone or you know working productivity things, I always feel like I have to have the best setup. And that's the point of today's video because I've been searching for a monitor that I felt like really allowed me to fit everything on the screen that I wanted. And I've tried a ton of different things. And I've finally come to the conclusion that what I have now is basically the best thing I'll ever be able to get for the next few years at least. And it's something that in general people wouldn't think to get. So I just want to talk about it, explain how I use it and why I think it's incredible. Um, as always, if you guys like the content, drop a sub so you can see more content. Um, if you want to help support the channel, drop a like and a comment on the video. But let's jump into it and we'll talk about the point of today's video. So obviously, if you guys know me, I'm a min-maxer in everything. Uh, I min-max my delivery orders. I min-max my PC setup. Um, I min-max my productivity setup. My whole life is about that. I don't know why. It's just I just like doing that. So it's something I enjoy. So as far as productivity goes, I've always been searching for a monitor that would improve my workflow. Um, so basically what I ended up with was the Odyssey G9, which is a Samsung monitor. Um, it's a 49-inch 1440p ultra, ultra-wide. So it's not an ultra-wide. Ultra-wides are 21 by 9 aspect ratio. The Odyssey G9 is 32 by 9. So it's essentially two 27-inch panels stuck together um, that are 1440p, both of them. Um, it's also 240 hertz with display stream compression. Not going to really talk about that, but it's basically a compression algorithm that uh, lets you display more data without any actual losses to visual quality. Um, because the resolution and, and refresh rate are so high on this, they had to use that in order to get the data to the screen. Um, you can see it has a massive curve. That was awesome. I loved the curve. Um, but it always just left me wanting more. I think it was 5120 by 1440. So really big resolution, obviously ridiculously big resolution horizontally, but vertically for programming, things like that. It's nice to have a bunch more code on the screen than what you can get with a 1440p uh, monitor. Um, so after thinking about it for a long time, I used this for probably a year, year and a half. And the more I thought about it, the more I was like, man, it would be really nice to just have a big, like 43 inch 4K TV. You can get those for super cheap. You can see this uh, G9 is like $1,200 right now, which is actually pretty cheap. Normally it's more than that, um, but that's extremely expensive. So if you look at like a 4K 43 inch TV, which is what I would recommend to most people for a productivity setup, you can get good ones for like $450. They don't look quite as good as the G9. Text won't look quite as clear. It's not It's not made for that that task, but the amount of stuff you can fill on the screen and the price difference absolutely makes up for it, in my opinion. Um, so for most people, that's what I would recommend. And I'll actually give a recommendation specifically for the TV that I bought when I was trying that. But for me, it wasn't what I wanted. I wanted something more than that. So being me, I got obsessed with it, did a bunch of research. And I was like, man, if I could get like a 48 inch 8K panel, that would be incredible for what I do. So I did a bunch of searching and I came up with this screen. It's gigantic. This is my new uh, 8K Samsung TV. I'll go through all the specs with you, but it's been amazing. And I want to talk about why it's been amazing uh, and how I think it's basically the best setup you can get for the kind of work that I do. But like I said, ideal size for me would be something like 43 inches. That would make it less wide than um, the G9 was, which would be nice, but I'd have much higher pixel density. Um, and I'd need good viewing angles because obviously if the TV's not going to be curved, the sides are going to be really angled away from your face compared to a curved monitor. So you want some sort of panel that has good viewing angles, like an IPS screen or something like that. Um, unfortunately at 8K, they never made a TV smaller than 55 inches. Um, so that just was not an option. Um, and the only 55 inch that I could find was this TV that was originally made in 2019. Um, it was the Samsung Q900 and it was originally priced at 3,500. I don't know if it was ever actually that price or if that was like a pseudo price where it was on sale to 1800 but it says it's sold for 1800 Unfortunately, they don't really make this anymore. Um, I got really lucky. I was looking for this TV everywhere, and I just, I live in San Diego, so I opened up my uh, OfferUp, which is an app for buying and selling things locally, and I searched 8K TV, and this was the first thing that popped up was somebody trying to sell this. So I was able to get a used version of this TV um, for $1,250, which is pretty close to what I'm going to sell my G9 for, and the experience for me has been incredible it is so much better than the g9 for what i do uh, and i'll explain to you guys why that is i do want to say in general 8k is pointless now at this point in time because there's just no content out there that's actually 8k um, even most graphics cards before like the rtx 30 series didn't even have hdmi 2.1 which means that they couldn't even push 8k 60 hertz which if you're using it on a pc you want 60 hertz 30 hertz is a terrible experience even for just using the desktop um, we'll talk about that more a little bit later um, but in general, 8K is pointless right now. Don't get an 8K TV just to watch TV. You can still get really high quality 4K, which is going to be 
probably the standard still for a pretty long time as far as actual content that's available out there. So don't get it for a regular TV, but if you're interested in doing this for a perform or for a productivity setup, thousand percent recommend. But let's jump into why that's so good for productivity. All right, so this will probably be pretty hard for you guys to see on uh, the camera view just because it's so far away. But basically, this is a typical setup for me while I'm working on true game data. Um, obviously, programming, working with a huge database. This 8K display is unbelievable for that. I don't run it at 8K because even even at 55 inches, if you ran it at actual 8K, it would be uh, the text would be too small really to read, even sitting just a few feet from the screen like I am. Um, basically, I run it at about 6K resolution, so I run it 8K and then I do display scaling to 150%, which means that it's basically like viewing crystal clear 6K. Um, I'll say that on this resolution with the scaling that I have, text is perfectly clear. It looks better than my uh, G9 did. Just it looks amazing. Um, but anyway, so on the top right, up in here, I have the code for the, the current file I'm working in. And then to the left of that, I have the error log so I can actively see if something errors out. I can immediately have the other page open where I can see that. I don't have to toggle between tabs and things like that, which slows down the work. I have the error log open. I also have true game data open. So if I'm working on a page and I want to actively see what changes as I'm changing the code, it's right there. All of it's on the screen. I don't have to toggle between tabs. And then I have so much extra real estate, even with that. If you think about what this is, this is basically four 4K panels next to each other. So because I've scaled that to 150%, it's essentially like four 1440p panels. Um, so if you look at the top right, I basically have my code on one 1440p panel, and then I have two tabs on one more 1440p panel. And then at the bottom, it's like two 1440p panels that has the database. So with this width of resolution, this is 7,300 7, pixels wide. I can fit the entire attachments database across the bottom with no... Um, row wrapping or anything like that. It's 43 columns wide at this point. So it's a massive amount of data. I can see it all at once and there's no text wrapping. It is just incredible for my workflow because I can have the database open, the code open, the error log and the website all at the same time and be able to see everything and work on everything as soon as I need to. Obviously, this is just one example. Something that's super, super nice about having all of this not separated in different screens is if I want to, I can have my code stretch all the way down to the bottom. And now I have two 4K panels on top of each other of, of vertical text, which is just crazy. It is so, so nice for programming. I can't even describe it. it it's just, it's game changing for me as far as my, my productivity level, even compared to the G9. Obviously, this is just one setup. You can set this up however you want. A lot of the time I'll have, um, you know, a Twitch stream open, RuneScape open, my code open, the database open. There's just room for everything on one screen and it's incredibly nice. So one of the big drawbacks, obviously, is that a lot of modern PCs um, won't even have a graphics card that has an HDMI 2.1 port, which is what you need to run 8K at 60 hertz. Uh, like I said, 30 hertz on the desktop is not a good thing at all. It was it was painful to use. So I have two PCs. I have my gaming PC, which has a 6900 XT GPU, and then I have my work PC, stream PC, productivity PC, which is a 5950X and an RTX uh, 1660 Super. Um, so 1660 Super does not have an HDMI 2.1 port. It has a 2.0B port, which does not support anything but 8K at 30 hertz. And even that 30 hertz doesn't support um, the highest color space. So the colors weren't very good when I first got this. And I wasn't even sure if it was going to be possible um, to run it at 8K60. My plan was just to swap over to an RTX 3050 if I had to. So I was going to sell the 1660 Super and get a, a 3050 because that does have an HDMI 2.1 port. But... There are converters online for DisplayPoint 1.4a to HDMI 2.1, and again, I was super skeptical that this could this would work. Um, I only had two options that I found on Amazon, and I'll show you guys the one that I got. So this is the HDMI 2.1 DisplayPoint 1.4 converter that I found that actually ended up working. I was extremely skeptical. Like I said, I couldn't find more than two of these anywhere on the internet. This is some not even like brand I recognized. UpTab. I was I was so skeptical that this would work. Um, but I was amazed. It worked perfectly. I plugged it in. It's an active converter, so you have to plug it into USB-C um, so it can get a power source, and it successfully turned my DisplayPort 1.4 into a 2.1 HDMI 2.1 and allowed me to run my screen at 8K60, um, as well as getting better colors. So I don't know exactly what, um, you know, what color space it's using, like the 420 or um, 422 or 4. I don't even know what those things mean. All I know is that higher numbers are better, and... I could immediately tell that when I switched over to this converter, um, my colors looked dramatically better, so it automatically switched to a higher, um, higher amount of colors being shown, which was which was awesome. I was not even even expecting that. I was expecting the colors to be the same, just to get 60 hertz, which was plenty for me because I'm not really 
you know, I'm not really concerned that much about color accuracy. Um, I feel like a lot of reviewers that you get reviews from on YouTube are all content creators. Um, so a lot of the time they, they review from a content creator's perspective. And I feel like a lot of people aren't content creators. There's a lot of programmers, a lot of database managers, a lot of gamers, things like that. Um, so I'll try to review things in terms of those people rather than just content creators. So I don't care so much about color, color accuracy for my content. It's not that big of a deal. Um, I, I'm assuming this has good color accuracy, but I just don't care about that. Mostly I'm a programmer and I just need to be able to see a lot of stuff. And this allows me to do that and getting 60 Hertz, uh, just made it so much better. So this works if you want to try it, if you don't have a 30 series GPU and you end up wanting to try an 8K TV for this kind of setup, um, I can tell you that this will work with the DisplayPoint 1.4a. One drawback, I'm not sure if it's using DisplayPort or if it's the converter or what, um, but I don't have sound on my TV anymore, so I can't use the speakers. The speakers that are built into the TV like I could before when it was on HDMI. So that's a bummer. It was nice to have speakers. They're not good speakers, and most people probably wouldn't use them anyway if they were connected to a, a PC like mine is. Probably use a good set of headphones, um, but I still like to have the option to use the speakers, so I'm a little bummed about that. Um, maybe someday I will get a 3050 or something, but for now, super, super happy with how this is performing something else i want to talk about that not i'm not normally a fan of uh for like watching tv and things is motion interpolation so a lot of these new tvs have the ability to smooth out two frames um, and basically run at a higher refresh rate with um calculated frames in between the other frames so normally i don't like this but i was shocked at how good it looks on this tv um so i took some super high speed videos of the uf uh, ufo motion blur test so you guys can see what this looks like on the right side of the screen we have uh, when the TV was running at 60 hertz, and then on the left side of the screen, the TV running at 120 hertz with motion interpolation at 8K, um, and it looks phenomenal. It's an actually incredible. I watched some Warzone gameplay on YouTube, and it almost just looks like 120 hertz. Obviously, it's not, and it probably also hurts your input lag times. I don't know a whole bu whole bunch about that, and I'm not using this screen for gaming. I wouldn't recommend that anyone get this for gaming. That's not the point of this video. This video is all about productivity, workflow, things like that. If you need more screen real estate, that's what this TV is for, not for gaming. It might be okay at gaming, but that's not why I would recommend anyone get it. But anyway, let's watch this video. Left side motion interpolation. This is video at 960 FPS that I took with my phone. Um, and you can see that on the right side, there is a lot of um, ghosting that's happening on the darker UFO tests. But on the lighter UFO tests at the bottom, there's almost no ghosting at all. And you can see that the screen is flashing a lot. This is because it has... Um, black frame insertion in between each actual frame and what that does is basically completely eliminate motion blur so everything looks crystal clear you can move a window across the screen really fast and still read the text and that's because of the the motion or, or that's because of the black frame insertion which is just super nice I'm actually a big fan of that I didn't even know this TV had it I didn't know it was doing it um, until I looked at these high, high speed uh, recordings and then I moved some, some windows around really fast and saw that everything was crystal clear um, so that, on top of how good the motion interpolation is, like it literally just looks like 120 hertz. It looks like the TV's running at AK120. For most things, moving windows around is super smooth in 120 hertz. Um, watching TV shows and things, I will say the one thing it gets a little confused on is if you have two different f refresh rate things running on the screen at once. So I was watching some Netflix earlier and playing RuneScape at the same time. RuneScape's running at 60. The Netflix TV show is probably 25 or 30 FPS. Um, and that really confused the TV. So that made some weird things happen. It still looked pretty good, but overall it just made some some kind of odd, I don't know, odd motion things happen that I, I didn't really like. But if you only do one of those two things at once, then it looks pretty good still. A lot of people probably would have thought this was a crazy idea and that this could never work. Um, but with my workflow, I loved it. It's incredible. I could not be happier. The only thing I want is this to be curved. If this was curved, I would literally sell a kidney for that i would i would pay five thousand maybe ten thousand dollars for this tv with a sharp curve because it's so big that when you're viewing something off to the side it's it's you know it's a really sharp angle and if it was curved that would be incredible and that would be something that i could use for the next 10 years so it'd be worth investing in something that can make me work faster so i can you know improve my my business my company uh and you know make more money for myself it would pay for itself over time but this as it stands I've tried 4K TVs, I've tried the Odyssey G9, I've tried multiple 1440p panels, I've tried every combination of things you can imagine for productivity. Far and above, this is my favorite setup I've ever had. I love it, and I just wanted to share it with you guys because I think it's really interesting. But that was the all I wanted to cover in this video. Um, just me blabbering about the TV for a long time, but I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned some things. 
Um, right now, definitely don't get an 8K TV just to watch TV, but if you're doing it for productivity reasons, potentially 55 inch 8K, incredible. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, if you want to see more content like this in the future, I'll be doing a Tesla review pretty soon. I might also do a review of the um, Sigma Rays keyboard, which is a really customizable, separatable keyboard. It's like an ergonomic keyboard. Um, I've got a couple of really interesting reviews coming up, so if you want to see those, be, be sure to hit subscribe, uh, and I'll see you guys all in the next video.